all right guys he's in here welcome back to the channel for another street fighter duel video so in today's video we're going to be going over part two of the homecoming adventures is to make sure you can get all of your rewards there is a missing boss or a missing chest that you can miss out on in this battle and that is if you make the wrong choice <laughs> now they've decided to basically make a recurring theme if you guys have done this before i've put, put this video out hopefully you quickly realized what was happening and that is they basically are using blanca as the boss who you can essentially screw up on right so i think going forward that's maybe what they're going to do so if you see blanca ask yourself could there be another choice that i could make here okay because that is what they've done in this battle so let's go through and we will do this and i will show you guys exactly how you do not mess up when it comes to the blanca situation okay so we've got one puzzle up at the top which is pushing boxes relatively simple i don't see too many people having issues with this boss uh, sorry with this puzzle then we've got some battles and i don't know if you class the switches the gates as a puzzle or not but we've got that as well so we'll move through here we'll get all of our rewards should be fairly straightforward fairly quick i think this whole video recording lasts about 10 minutes so there won't be any pauses or anything we'll just go through so you've got the different um houses over here you've got the one that's got the yellow above their head the one that's got yellow above its roof even is the shopkeeper um i'm pretty sure before if i'm being honest it was also a shopkeeper so it's um not too dissimilar to other times so yeah let's move on through here this is the puzzle first again this was fairly straightforward it's just a case of pushing up push something to the sides move on through really not difficult at all Push that one, that's right. Again, that's us leaving enough space to move these boxes into. I had to take a second to make sure I wasn't going to be making a mistake here, but then I could actually see quite easily what it was that I had to do. Now this felt like a two second pause in my head. Obviously I paused for longer than two seconds. So we pushed this one up. We move this next one up. Then we can move this one, and then we just move this one out of the road. That's us. We're free to go and take on these two stages to get the reward from here. Now, you only get five tickets from this part, okay? I'll tell you that just now. Don't be thinking that you've maybe missed out on some tickets if you haven't got more than five. Um, I think there's... I never actually counted it, but I think there's 35 tickets in total. And let me just see if that's right, actually. 35 plus... 10, 20, 35, that would be 70, plus 10, that would be 80, plus 15, that would be 95, no, there might be, there might be 40 tickets from this event, so we might get 15 tickets in the next part, right, so you're moving on through now, to these houses, this is where your, your choice comes into play, okay, and also, you're going to have to backtrack here, okay, this was an issue in one of the earlier puzzles that we did, or a, I don't know, I think it was the anniversary event maybe, where as soon as you have to backtrack, people seem to forget that you've been told something in the previous episode, okay? Now, funnily enough, it's the exact same thing. The Eternal Lamp. Now, I don't think this is the same puzzle, though. I don't think this is the same level, but it's very close to being the same level. So, Sakura tells you just now about the, the Eternal Lamp, you can use the eternal lamp you fill it up with lava that happened before the volcano is on this stage you're going to get the eternal lamp on the next stage so what's going to happen is in two or three days time you will get the eternal lamp and you're going to have to come back to this area to then go and fill it up right so you can see there that i spoke to the shopkeeper he's telling me to go after blanca okay now you could just go up just now and go after blanca but if you look about the map you will see that the house at the bottom has now got an asterisk over it. So you go to that and you'll speak to Rose. And Rose will essentially tell you the shopkeeper's bad. 
as if you couldn't tell, right? As if you couldn't tell. But the shopkeeper is, in fact, a bad guy. So, now Blanca will change to a house, which means you've got a choice. You don't have to fight Blanca. You can take the choice to side with Blanca. In my... My... Opinion, I think is what you're supposed to do, because it's always what you're supposed to do. Side with Blanca, because Blanca's in the right, so obviously the right choice is to take the right answer, and in this case, the right answer is you go with Blanca, okay? So, we'll move up here just now. You'll get to the house. When you get to the house, you won't fight Blanca. You'll instead speak to Blanca. And you'll be given the choice to either choose Blanca or choose the shopkeeper, right? So Blanca's complaining that the shopkeeper will not give him his salary. Choose Blanca, okay? The house will light back up. Awesome, it won't light back up, it'll become the guards, you go and fight them. So collect the chest up at the top. Oh well, I went after the shopkeeper first. Could have just took the chest, it doesn't really make a difference. So quickly run through the shopkeeper, which is fairly straightforward. I mean, everything's straightforward if you're using Vega. Okay, awesome sauce. Then you move up to the top and we'll be getting to this switchy thing soon. Now, obviously today also opened up the next part of the puzzle where are the next part of the levels where you could get yourself another copy of a unit and today it was Raphael. How have you guys got on so far? Where are you sitting with regards to units? Who have you pulled more of? Do you have luck more in one area than you do in another? I've had a lot of people saying that they seem to be seeing that the summons are leaning a lot more towards Donatello. I can't say that's my experience. Um, even though in the original video, you if you watched that when I was summoning, I was getting more Donatellos than Raphael. That pretty much stopped dead. Um, Donatello has been the hardest one for me to pull. I have pulled vastly more um, Raphaels than I did Donatello. If it wasn't for those boxes, I would be nowhere near having Donatello done. But as it stands, I've used one box for Raphael, and I have him at SS4, or SSS4, and I've used every other box for Donatello, and I have him at SSS3. Um, I don't think I've got any Donatello dupes. I mean, I might have one Donatello dupe. I'm not sure. I would need to check, but for me, the, the luck has certainly been more leaning towards um, Raphael than Donatello. And honestly, Donatello is the pickup. He is the standout unit. I mean, you could maybe argue he's the standout unit of the entire thing, but that is purely subjective. Um, the two best units, hands down, are Leonardo and Donatello. People that favour a DPS will probably say that Leonardo was a better unit, but I tend to favour the longevity that a, a support unit brings. It's very easy to power creep DPS units, it's not so easy to power creep a good, D, a good support unit, hence the reason why Poison is still probably one of the best supports in the game. So I see Donatello having a lot more longevity than Leonardo. The other one that I've seen is people saying, and I find that's a really weird take, um, it, people who have built Vega are, are losers now because the turtles exist. I don't know if I agree with that. Um, let me just say why. First of all, the damage immunity that you get from Donatello if you have him built, that isn't immune to Vega. Vega will just cut through that because that is his gimmick. He cuts through damage immunity. Um, don't get me wrong, it is really good, right? But the difference maker and the reason that I would say that I still would put Vega above the Turtles is because I don't think the Turtles, any of them, I don't think any of them are 
as good as Vega on their own, okay? Um, and to be honest, depending on the content, even together, Vega's still going to outperform in some content. But the thing is, I don't think you can just take Leonardo for talking sake and make him do as much as you would get from someone like Vega. You need to have him with other characters. You don't need to do that. You can just put Vega into a team and he's going to perform. By the way, that's all of your your stuff done, right? I'll just pause this and I'll finish my train of thought here. Um, I think that Vega, even though Vega is, now people are finding more counters for him, but that doesn't like make him not amazing. That's good that people are finding counters for him. I would still probably rank Vega above any individual turtle. I could see an argument for putting Donatello because he's a support unit, so I don't really necessarily think we compare them like for like. Um, people talk about Raphael um, and how Raphael is a great buffer. Okay, yes, I'll, I'll give you that. Raphael is a really good buffer. For the turtles, if you put him into a normal team, he will buff. But I don't see why you would run him over running Evil Ryu. So, if it comes to it, and you're saying that you are someone who has got a bunch of turtles, then Raphael is a great buffer for that team. If you take him out of that team and put him into another team, he is still a good buffer. But I don't think I would run him over Evil Ryu for the same similar type of buffing. I just feel like Evil Ryu would bring more to the table in a non-Turtles team than Raphael would. So if you've got all the Turtles, then yeah, go for Raphael. But if not, I, I don't I don't really get the energy where people might be now calling him the best attacking buffer in the game. Because yes, on a Turtles team, that's he's going to scale that damage significantly. On a normal team, I don't think he's going to outperform Evil Ryu, just in general, especially with the fact that Evil Ryu has got other things in his kit, like ignoring damage immunity and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll do a video probably when I've got time tomorrow, going over all the turtles again, because I've got some really good rotations and stuff like that where I can show you guys um, some fantastic performances in bossing and stuff like that. But again, it's kind of hard to rank a unit during the event because as people love to remind me, and I do forget, so I do appreciate people reminding me of this, during an event, there's always a buff that's active that's going to benefit that new unit. So a new unit is always going to look phenomenal when it's released because when it's released, there is usually some kind of buff active. Now that doesn't mean when that buff goes away, the unit isn't as good but it can be quite hard to rank them during that because they are seeing a significant increase from the buff that's running during the event. Anyway, I'll go, I'll go over that in its own video. This is it, all your rewards. I've been Hazing, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.